My name is Mike. I'm the best man, but more importantly, I'm better known as Mark's younger brother. Thank you. I've had to take six COVID tests. I've downloaded that Air Canada app five times. I had to open up a bag of milk with a scissor. And I've had to eat something called a charcuterie board 12 times <laughs> since Mark and Mary started dating. So I have a lot to unpack here today. First of all, can we give a round of applause for my sister? She looks absolutely stunning today. Now, can we also give a round of applause for Mary? She looks absolutely stunning as well. Beautiful, stunning. Mary, what can I say? I still don't know what a charcuterie board is. But it seems like you love them, and so I'm grateful that you've brought them to our family's life. <laughs> Phoebe loves this speech already. <laughs> Mary, you have a heart of gold. You have brought to us a sense of kindness, joy, lightheartedness, and simplicity. And my brother is the absolute happiest that I've ever seen him. I knew Mark truly loved Mary when he told me he was going to skip his coveted and holy afternoon nap to go see a uh, friend in the city. I knew something was up because Mark doesn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> so I knew whoever this was, she had to be legit. And with that being said, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible as I know my brother is going to have to take his fourth nap of the day shortly. <laughs> now, Mary, this speech is actually going to be mainly directed to you. Because, you see, for the longest time, I was always known as Mark's younger brother. Now, many of the younger siblings here probably don't like that notion, but for me, it was always something that I took pride in. It was always something that I liked when people said <laughs> And today is a special day in my mind because today is the day where Mary kind of takes on that role. She kind of assumes the role of being Mark's person. And what I wanted to do today, Mary, is to let you in on a few things that you can expect being in this new role. A few things that you can expect being Mark's person. Mary, first and foremost, Mark is a God-fearing man. Despite the often heretical jokes <laughs> and moments when he puts on his tonia and his skin starts to burn and sizzle <laughs> just a little bit, my brother's relationship with God has always been at the forefront of his life and it is just absolutely apparent in how he treats other people. Guys, my brother was so God-fearing from such a young age that any time he had to pee, he would call me into the restroom and say, hey, let's pee in a cross. <laughs> because, quote, God would love that, end quote. <laughs> this is only going to get worse. Thankfully for Phoebe and Mary, Mark and I kicked that habit about two weeks ago. <laughs> now, Mary, Mark was always my protector growing up. Despite being a scrawny, blue-eyed kid from Long Island, New York, Mark being around always made me feel like everything was going to be all right like everything was gonna be okay. He didn't have to say too much, he didn't have to do too much, 
but his presence alone, I knew I was good. I remember the night I, before I started high school, I was very nervous. I was scared, shaking. And I don't recall too much from that day, but what I do recall is that that night, Mark came to me in a very Mark-like fashion, and he said, hey, I made the beds in the guest room, and we're sleeping there tonight. And that night, Mark and I talked for hours until I went to sleep. And I knew from that moment on that I was going to be all right because my big brother was there. Now, the following morning, I'm at my locker. I'm scared. I'm fumbling. I have my folders, my pencils, whatever. And as I pick my head up, who do I see but my brother walking down the hallway like Superman? And he came to me, and he made sure I was okay. He made sure I was going to be all right. He made sure that I was safe. And I was going to be okay because my big brother, my Superman, was going to be there. And Mary, that's something that you can expect, is that whenever you're around Mark, you will feel safe. Now, I see that Mark took a sip of coffee with milk, so I know that our time is surely, surely running out. Very, uh, very brave. Mary, there's not too many things that I can guarantee you. I know that. But I think there's one. Mary, the number one thing that I can guarantee you, the number one thing that I am most sure about, the thing that I'm absolutely certain of, no question in my mind, is that by being Mark's person, Mary, you will for sure, for sure, have unathletic children. <laughs> I mean, God bless his soul, but it just, it's not happening. It's not happening. Mary, Mark has made history. Guys, Mark is the only player in the history of the Coptic Basketball League to play in seven seasons. Seven seasons. Wearing the same jersey and never, ever having to wash it one time. <laughs> My brother was more likely to lose his voice at a basketball game than to injure himself playing. Now, Mary, many of us have those dates in history that we'll never forget. You know, for some of us, it's Y2K, the millennium. Others, 9-11, of course. The day COVID struck, for some of you, maybe like when maple syrup or Tim Hortons was invented, I don't know. <laughs> but for me and my family, the day that Mark Ashamalla tried out for the varsity boys basketball team is a day that we will never, ever forget. You see, for those of you who don't know, Mark and I grew up going to a public school out in Long Island, New York. And generally, the idea there is those who try out will make the team. Those who are on the team will kind of get equal playing time, you know, that sort of thing. Luckily for this guy, that year there was 15 spots on the team and only 14 kids were trying out. <laughs> ah. Somehow, somehow, some way, Mark got cut from the basketball team. <laughs> now, this wasn't a space issue, right? They could accommodate. No, this, this was an abilities thing. And I'll never forget the day because when he came home and told us, I remember my parents were laughing so hard <laughs> that I think my dad tore a little bit of his diaphragm, but thank God he's all right now. And when he came, he told us he got cut. We said, Mark, there's no way, there's no such thing as cuts. Mark, you must have misunderheard. Mark, you must have misheard them. Mark, there must be a mistake. He said the coach told him, Mark, you did a lot of good things out there, but there's a few things that I'd like you to work on. <laughs> 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 
the coach told him, Mark, you are really, really, really fast. <laughs> End of quote, period. He said some things that you'd like to work on is your defense, your dribbling, your passing, your shooting, your coordination, your court awareness, and well, just many, many more. Needless to say, my brother didn't make the team that year, but there is a A plus for trying. Now, Mary, of course, I kid. Being Mark's person is the absolute best place on earth that you can be. Mark is genuine, he's loyal, he's kind, he's God-fearing, and he's lighthearted. He's absolutely my role model, and I've, I have been so blessed to be his person all of these years. And I pray from the bottom of my heart that your children are good at math, <laughs> or science, or social studies, anything that doesn't rely on his genetics. But more importantly, I pray that today begins a journey that is full of love, joy, humility, and kindness. We've already done a toast, but I just say, we love you. Congratulations. We're so happy for you, Mabruk. <laughs>